why don't you keep that same energy two years, three years, four years into your relationship? That's a choice. It is. And, and like not finding a way to talk to your person is also a choice. It's okay to not like your person sometimes. There's going to be days where you're going to be underneath of each other's skin, especially if you're around each other 24 mm seven, -hmm. right? Like you're not always going to like your person, but you should always love them. If she goes back to work, unless she makes enough money to profit after daycare for both of those kids, you're still living in a deficit. The only difference is, is the mother is no longer there to properly raise the children. You're giving the kids to other people to raise. I've had these sweatpants for like eight years. Ooh, good for you. I bet they're really comfy. They are. They don't make baggy sweatpants like they used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all have that weird like jogger thing on the bottom or they're tight. Yeah. And I don't have little legs. I'm not, no. not a little guy. My honey baked hams. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. Ooh. <laughs> And we are back. Welcome back, Bumblebees. For those of you who are new here, we are the To Be Better podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Peaches. And we are going to be doing some emails today. For those of you who have never listened to the podcast before, there's probably going to be about 20 to 45 minutes of us just BSing, talking about life, banter, things of that nature. And then we will be reading emails from our followers. Anonymously. Yes, anonymously. Uh, we will be giving life experience based responses, purely our unbiased opinions. We are not trained professionals. Not even a little bit. No certification here. Yep. Uh, so take what you will from these podcasts. We have helped people with their relationships, their marriages, their their parenting. Um, but Wanting it, to be alive. Yes. Yes. Even that. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy what we're about to do. And if you are new here, please subscribe to the channel and share this. Uh, that's the best way to help us grow the channels by getting this to as many people as possible. So with that being said, how was your vacation to Tennessee, Miss Miss Madam Peaches DeVille? It was nice. Yeah. Cold. It was very cold. Very chilly. That gator thing I got was really neat. Yeah. Yeah. Did that actually my, help you? All of my exhales was just kind of like insulated in there. Yeah. It was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I wear those uh, whenever I, I'm going to be in the sun. I don't want that shit on my neck. Mm -hmm. You start wearing, wearing it when we go riding. Yeah, I feel like I need a vacation from our vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. We did a lot. Every day was something. Yeah. Zip lining, off-road riding. Meet and greet. Meet and greet. We did our first meet and greet. Well, our first official meet and greet. It was an official meet and greet, yeah. yeah. With very little notice, and we still had 12 people show up with very little notice. Yes, Couple drove from Ohio to could, Tennessee. Could you imagine how that would play out if we were like, all right, guys, in two weeks? <laughs> we would have to get like a venue or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, even if it was 40 people who showed up, we can't house 40 people in a Calhoun's. No. No. Uh, and locally, we couldn't house them, period. We'd have to rent like a Dave and Buster's or something. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that would be fun. It would be fun. Maybe that's something we should look into because they're in all the major cities. And that would make it so that we're in a public setting anyways that's neither here nor there i i had a lot of fun with that meet and greet i got i finished off a bottle of blanton's yeah um and the nurse uh, the nurse wow the uh wait staff was kind enough to give me the bottle mm -hmm. because i did not have the letter n and now i have it if any of you guys have blanton's bottles that you finish and you're not collecting these you can send them to our po box please please not the bottle just the cap so that i can get them all I would like the bottle. I could put stuff in it. You can have that one. And you can have either one of those or both of those up there too when we're done. No way. Yeah. Thank you. I always just throw them in the garbage, so. Oh, I'll use it for things. Yeah. There yeah. won't be a cap, though. That's okay. One of these other caps may fit. We'll figure it out. We did go a little, we did do a little bit of bottle hunting. Um, mm -hmm. we, we Ironically enough, we see this gas station, uh, and directly behind the gas station is a liquor store, and we go into this liquor store, and I was able to find two bottles of Elijah Craig that are hard to find here which are just everywhere up there mm -hmm. and i was able to get three bottles of that um barrel proof larceny which is a limited release and every time i've ever seen that they've limited it to one i bought three and the guy didn't say shit i could have bought all of them and he would have been totally okay with it yeah yeah so i picked up a couple bottles for friends of mine and um one for me and you know doing the the whiskey thing mm -hmm. mike really wants to do a whiskey podcast with me yeah yeah i don't know if i would ever do that but he wants to 
I don't want to drink like that. Yeah. I enjoy my whiskey, but I don't enjoy um, overindulging. I get that. So what was your favorite part of the vacation? Not eating shit on my dirt bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to, um, I was editing the life vlog and uh, you could hear your voice through my GoPro because yeah. of the speakers. And uh, I was like, you were like, I, I was like, well, you're going downhill. Just, you know, hit your brakes, you know, pump them so that you don't lock your wheel up. And you're like, I don't know what that means. And you could tell you were panicking. I was absolutely terrified. Yeah. And I had to just like, you know, just gently touch them so that yeah. you can slow down without sliding. And if you slide, you just let off the brake because there's no ABS on those dirt bikes. Yeah. But it's uh, the shit was fun. I had a lot of fun. It was very neat to be able to find little cricks. And yeah, I recorded something for my Instagram and posted it. I, I want to get to the point where you're super comfortable on those bikes so that we can get adventure bikes. I would like on the way back to the van when we were going downhill and like I was I was doing pretty OK. I was standing up and going over potholes and weaving. It's a lot for me. I know but I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I'm doing OK. I want to I want to tackle that massive hill. Yeah. When do you want to do that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe next Saturday or something. Is in the one that's coming up? Yeah. We could do that. See how see how I feel? Yeah. I'm pretty stoked that I was able to stand up and make those turns and whatnot. You still hold the bike with your legs? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, I got to stop. I got to relax that. Yeah. Yeah, I um I, I I am looking forward to the adventure aspects of things. Um taking that van out of town again and knowing what it's capable of doing mm -hmm. now that it's lifted and all of that shit, it's even more exciting because we don't have to ride the adventure bikes. We can van them to where we want to go yeah. and then ride the adventure bikes and then put them back in the van and be nice, you know, and comfortable <laughs> on the way back. Cozy. Yeah. Had we had to ride those adventure bikes in Tennessee over the weekend, I'd been miserable. I would have asked to stay somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. As in not ride with me? My hands. Yeah. No, I know. It was bad. They hurt so bad. <laughs> we had to go to Cycle Gear and we had to go to Twice. REI and Twice. buy base layers. And like, it was, it was a lot. I'm, I'm not built for that cold weather. No, I am such a Floridian. Yep. Yep. We woke up one morning. It was 29 degrees. Not about that life. Oh man. Yeah. Are we going to survive living in Tennessee? Yeah. We got time. Yeah, Dude, I, I want a we, fireplace in every room. We got to just snowbird it. Ooh, it's a good call. I can do three, four months in yeah. Florida. Just get a rental up there yeah. and live there part-time and live here part-time would be the way to go. Big brain. Big money. Rentals yeah. are not cheap. But we'll figure that out. I think we should talk about the meet and greet a little bit. Okay. Uh, we Go ahead, because you're taking deep breaths. Oh, I was just breathing. I was so nervous. <laughs> so nervous about that meet and greet. Why? Because... It was just all new people and all eyes on us. And it was just a strange experience. Did it help having Dakota and uh, Tasha there? Yeah, it, it was like reassurance. Familiar faces. Yeah, got to bring the dog with us or well, they brought the dog with yeah. them. So we got to see Ivy again. I did pretty good talking to her. Yeah, she did everything I told her to. Yep. It was interesting watching the way that she reacted to people. Yeah. Yep. It was it was a good time. I um I I think that I really think that that's going to be a big part of of the things that I want to do this year because I had a yeah. really good time. Although next time we do a meet and greet, it will not be an invite only meet and greet, so I'm not paying for you fuckers. Yeah, <laughs> we announced it on Discord. If you're not part of our Discord, I highly recommend checking it out it's through our Patreon. Patreon is linked somewhere near mm -hmm. here. It's in the description of the video. Fantastic. So Discord gets first release everything. Yeah. Doesn't that include an hour beforehand for t-shirt drops? Uh, well, yeah. So I, I don't know how many more t-shirt drops we're going to do, though. Yeah. Um, I'm, we were doing them every month, and we have a pretty big back stock of shirts currently sitting in the studio. So until those sell out or get down to, like, lower stock, I don't want to order any more shirts. Okay. So for you guys, those of you who want to buy merch, we do have merch on the website. We have his and her shirts that we wrote, like, uh, a pretty cool phrase on the front of each where I wrote mine. She wrote hers, and they're Kinda his like and her bounce. shirts. Yeah. We still have some choose your hearts. We still have some accountability shirts on there as of right now. Um, the tattoos, not just for sailors and horse shirts, are on the website. We so we're on uh, the ships. Yeah, uh, we're yeah we're we've got like mm -hmm. fifteen of those left. Yeah, 
I, I want to, we still have some of the um, protector shirts. We still have a few of the, my husband's got me shirts. I, I like, I like where the shirt thing was going. I just, we were doing it so much that like, I think we should do them quarterly. Okay. So that we're not over, over selling shirts. I agree. But. It was dope to meet people and put like. Faces to the discord names. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we do it in mass, it'll be dope to put faces to the numbers that we see. That's true. That's true. It's wild to me to think that we've affected people's lives to the point where people are driving four to five hours to hang out with us. Right. And it was only for like an hour and a half dinner. Yep. It was a good dinner, though. The food it was, was good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for all of you who showed up. Uh, for those of you who are interested in a meet and greet and would like to meet us sometime in 2024, you will be need to be a part of the Discord, our Patreon community. We will not be announcing it on TikTok or anything like that. That might be a 2025 or 2026 thing, mm -hmm. but even that, like, that wouldn't be a security thing that would need to be in place before we could do that. So, yeah. But it's, um, it was fun. We are revamping the podcast a little bit again. Um, we are going to be doing the podcast, which will still be emails on Mondays. Uh, we are now, I think we're three months out on interviews already. So, like, we're done with February. I think we're into March currently. And as the time of this recording, today's January 3rd for us. You guys won't get this until February. But we have all the way into March already recorded. And then we have other people coming starting this weekend, next weekend. Like, we have all the way, every weekend in, until the end of February has got guests coming. Wow. So, Friday releases will be interviews. We are going to be continuing to do R&Rs and extra recordings because we have time to do it now because of the way the schedule is. Um, so there will be more releases, um, more frequent releases. By the time this episode drops, the Sunday scriptures with my adopted mom will be on, on YouTube as well. Those will be about 30 to 40 minutes of whatever scripture she wants to talk about that day. That'll be YouTube-only content. We won't be putting that to the podcast, but we are going to start integrating... Um, some more of the, the, the drama type emails because we, we stepped away from that a little bit because it started to become too much, mm -hmm. but we've had a lot of vacations and we've, we've taken, taken steps to ensure that we don't get burnt out like we were before. So we're doing the thing. We are doing it. I had a lot of fun with you this week. Did you? Yep. I, I, when editing our vlog, uh, which will be on the to be better life YouTube account, mm -hmm. um, you were like. Today's been a great day. It's been 14 hours in a car. I loved it. I was with my husband. Like, yeah. you know, and, and like I was having a shit day because I was you driving. Traffic was bad. We were fixing having, tires. Right. So there was just like a whole lot of things that was stressing me out. And you were just living your best life as a passenger princess. I was. <laughs> but playing it back, hearing the things that you were saying to the camera while I was doing the tire stuff or getting gas or whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. Um it just made me think of all the fun conversations and the stupid shit that was said while we were driving. And it was, it was a good little trip. It was, it was, it was a much needed solo. You and I, mm -hmm. I think the next vacation we take needs to be, um, somewhere away from people we know to like really truly just de decompress or maybe go to like Arizona or fly somewhere and leave the van and the, and the bikes and just yeah. like really explore, explore, right. Hike, Ooh, that'd be whatever. So fun. It, I, there's got to be somewhere where we can go and rent adventure bikes right. and like do like a adventure weekend where we camp and do all of that shit. Even though I don't really want to sleep outside, I, I would at least once. Do with you think you. we could get like a tandem hammock? Um, we have hammocks, so they're not tandems, but we have hammocks. Can I just lay on you? <laughs> that would not be a very comfortable sleep for me. Oh, I know. Because I would feel bad if I have to roll over. Just roll with me. Treat me like a chihuahua. Push you right off the hammock. <laughs> I'd be so fucked up. <laughs> the ground would be so hard and cold. My bones would hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm done with the, the north shit until after April. <laughs> yeah. We need it to warm up a bit. And, and I'm just saying Tennessee like that's the north. <laughs> <laughs> it was the north for us. My knee injury from the first time I went down on the Suron, like every time it's really, really cold out, it's excruciatingly painful. Yeah. Feels like someone's taking like a hot knife, like red hot knife and is shoving it underneath my kneecap. Hmm. I wonder what you did to your knee. <laughs> Who knows? I never went to the doctor. <laughs> I can still walk. Yeah, so. you're not limping. No. Hmm. Just grit through the pain. Are you going to do some more cooking videos? I am. The next thing I want to make is a red potato skin pie. 
I don't know what that is, but neat. It's a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pizza. Um, I'm going to make the, the dough and there's no tomato sauce on it. So it's like a garlic and olive oil covering on the dough and then you top it with red potato that's been oven baked. And then if you want to know the rest, you're going to have to check out the video. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, let's jump into some emails. We'll, we'll do it quick today. We won't, won't waste too much time. Okay. This one's titled, Scared to Need Help. Okay. Hi there. I've watched your podcasting clips on TikTok here and there after my partner started sharing some of your views. I became immediately drawn to not only the respect you two share, but to the advice and care you put into every word you give to others. I don't respect you. Fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> I was actually just going to get a drink, but I figured yeah. I'd, I'd make that funny. So dramatic. I have a long history of abusive relationships. Every girl I've ever been with has taken advantage of me, yelled, cussed, and even some have hit me. Says a lot about the women you pick. Yeah. Sounds like there's a type. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's because I'm a very laid back and chill guy. I don't get angry. I don't yell. I have no need to fight with people because it feels like a waste of energy. Right. So you're wrong. You're wrong. You can be a laid back, chill guy and not have a need to fight with people and not have women who abuse you. Yeah. Right. That comes down to the people you pick. Mm -hmm. Find somebody that has that laid back energy that has communication skills. And respect. And respect. Right. Yeah. I saw a video the other day where... Uh, Obviously, it was on TikTok, but it was uh, a dude that was sitting on a game show or a talk show, and it was like him and the woman, and then over there was the guy that was like the host of the show, and it was like, this is what men deal with, and the guy is like sitting there, and she's berating him, and then she starts hitting him in the head, and nobody steps in and does anything about it, and he's just sitting there taking it, and you can see the man is just a very defeated fucking dude, and like... Oh man, I, I don't I don't understand. That's abuse. It, it is abuse. I, but I don't understand how somebody can let it get that far. Maybe because of my past, like I if I felt like you and I were getting to the point where there was about to be a physical altercation, mm -hmm. I'm leaving. There's a strong possibility that that's the end of it. Like there's not going to be reconciliation. It, there would have to be therapy, and like there would have to be a whole lot of things that to pull us back from that brink. Because when it gets to that point where violence is, is an plausible option. right yeah. I'm, I'm good I'm good on that back to the email yes i was single for a really long time and met this girl over a year ago and she changed everything we were together for a while and everything was going so perfectly well she made me feel things i didn't know i could feel she helped me better myself she made me feel seen and wanted i never felt jealous or worried about losing her the list truly goes on and on for how absolutely perfect things were. But like always, I lost the feeling. I lost the attraction. I lost the love. I still deeply feel for her and care about her well-being, but the romantic factor has vanished. So it sounds like the obsession phase. Yep. And now that that's gone, you care for her as a human being, but you're not interested in her romantically. Right. It's crazy to me how people allow that to happen. Let it go. It, because it's a choice. It it, it's easier to just play on your phone and watch TV than it is to be intimate with your person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much to do the stupid shit. Like, no. it, it, in the last seven days, we've danced three times and, and had an intimate moment in the gym. And mm -hmm. I don't mean like sexual intimate. I mean like, I just held on to you for a minute. We just sat there and, and fucking vibed. I danced with you in the back of the van while we were loading tools in there the other day. Like, yeah. It, it doesn't take much if you're doing something to just be physical. If you were if you were in that first year and everything is super dope and you're like trying to hold their hand all the time and you're trying to touch them under the table and smack their booty when they walk by and like, why don't you keep that same energy two years, three years, four years into your relationship? Because transgressions have happened. Yeah, but the... That's yes. people's excuse. It, right, and, and I get that. I understand that that like you become jaded because things don't get resolved. Right. Right? Like you dug at that that splinter trying to get it out so that things can be good, but mm -hmm. you've pushed it further in and it's always fucking there and you always know that it's there. And it's like on the tip of your finger. So it's always at the forefront oh, of your mind. You're making me nauseous. Right? But like that's a choice. It is. And and like not finding a way to talk to your person is also a choice. Mm -hmm. So that conversation could be had and that splinter can be removed. And, you know, if you're willing to, to do the work to do that, mm -hmm. 
but to let things go to the point where like you're now in a sexless relationship, the intimacy is gone. You don't feel that desire and that attraction to your person anymore. Like I hate to say that you did that to yourself, but you fucking did. I, 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 as a man have been in those relationships in my life and I would never want that to be a thing again. And I go above and beyond to make sure that, that our intimacy is an ebb and flow between the, the two of us. And like hearing that shit, that sucks. Yes. Why would you want to live like that? It sounds, <clears throat> I don't know. I hear that and my mind equates it to like the bubonic plague and people just dying and being miserable. And there's very little hope of things. The The other thing that I thought of in mm -hmm. all of that was that if you have the perfect everything and your intimacy fades, it wasn't perfect. It was new. Yeah. You, you're, you're probably a spoiled kid, it's right? Shiny. Like, oh, look at this new toy I got. Oh, look at that new toy. I want that one next. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, instead of going, okay, I, I got this. I got this brand new car that's mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give it attention and keep it waxed and detailed and clean and ceramic coated and keep my tires right and do my oil changes. And I'm going to make this car last for a long time because I love this car. And then when you start to get bored with your car, be like, all right, new tires, new rims. Let's get a vinyl wrap on the side of this bitch. Let's tent the windows. Let's put a new stereo system in here. Like... That's your relationship. You should be upgrading. Yep. Let's go on vacation, babe. Let's do this. Let's have these memories. Let's fucking. Let's get Jinkos. Right? Yeah. They're being delivered today, by the way. I'm so excited. Tell me too. I can't wait to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what it is. If you can, if you can, if you can put that much time and effort into an, a, an, a possession, an mm -hmm. item, because you, you love it. Why not put that same effort into a relationship? Yeah. There are people who are still driving their 1998 Subarus because they love it. Yep. You are a bus. I'm a bus? Subaru backwards. What? You are a bus. Okay. If you write it backwards, it says you okay. are a Oh, and then B-U-S. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's the B, but what does the U-S stand for? <laughs> Us. <laughs> bus. <laughs> Back into the email? Yeah. Okay. I still deeply feel for her and care about her well-being, but the romantic factor has vanished. Sometimes sparks come back and it's like nothing ever changed. It's like I never ended our relationship and broke her heart because I love her deeply as if it was the first time all over again. But sometimes I feel absolutely nothing except for general comfort. I feel as if I'm broken and can never be with somebody if it's, this is my history. It does. I don't understand. Did he already end this relationship with her? And then yes. they've had like little flings. Um, is, is that how that was worded? Did, did you take it that way? It's like I never ended our relationship and broke her heart because I love her deeply as if, as if it was the first time all over again. So he did break up with her. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like there's something going on within him. Mm hmm. I don't know. There's never a day that goes by where I'm like, I just kind of like my husband today. It's, I am always in love with you and I'm grateful for you. I'm not going to cry. It's okay to not like your person. Sometimes there's going to be days where you're going to be underneath of each other's skin, especially if you're around each other 24 mm seven, -hmm. like COVID. Yeah. And a lot, saw a lot of breakups because people were stuck up each other's asses and couldn't go anywhere. Right. Like you're not always going to like your person, but you should always love them. Right. And if you are if you have love and you don't want to see anything bad happen to them, that's different. That's ju just normal compassion and humanity. But like if you're if you're falling out of love, were you actually ever in love? Right. Because that doesn't sound like there was real love there. It sounds like he was new, shiny and fun. Fascination. Lustful. Right. Yeah. But when things got comfortable, eh, is this really what I want? Can I find better? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Well, there's a follow-up. Okay. And this is seven months in between. Okay. Hi, I'm still mentally struggling a lot with the relationship I have with her. I have days where I love her dearly and days where I'm numb to the entire world. It's caused me to refrain from officially asking her to be my girlfriend, but she's still so patient with me. Wait a minute. So they're not even together. No, it sounds like they're kind of courting and fucking around. That's the assumption that I have from this. Okay, and it's been seven months of this. Correct. Uh, seven months, I'm sure she feels like they're actually together. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's don't do that to people. Like that's a shitty fucking thing to do to somebody. Yeah. And to say she's so patient with me, it sounds like you're kind of stringing her along a that's little exactly bit. Exactly what it sounds like to me. Like she has the hope that there's going to be a relationship, and you keep pinning that hope there. It sounds like I love you. I hate you. I want you here, but I also kind of want my space and I don't want to. Back into the email, we continue to have open communication and work together to figure things out. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better woman to have entered my life because I can tell she would give me the world if she could. I feel like I don't deserve her since my feelings aren't straightforward. We had a talk the other day where she told me relationships aren't black and white Relationships aren't always defined by the same terms and labels. And it resonated with me a lot. That's just because I can't commit. That just because I can't commit to, to traditional labels doesn't mean I can't commit to her. Because I haven't seen other girls since I've met her. Even when we were just friends, she was the only girl I could see. I hope I can overcome this. I know a lot of it is probably has to do with my depression and my issues that have stemmed from previous relationships, but just having her by my side makes my darkest days feel worth it. If that was true, you would you would actually give her the commitment she wants. Right. This is bullshit. This is a bullshit scenario. I'm not saying that it's not real. He could really be going through this, but mm-hmm. like, I, if I was that chick or like I knew her, I'd be like, you need to leave. Yeah. You're, you were wasting your time and you were pouring into somebody that can't even give you the commitment that like, you're going to do this for the next 10 years? Right. All of this in the hopes that yeah. he can finally commit. Bro, you, you have like severe depression going on. At least it sounds like that to me. Mm-hmm. Or you are just very inconsistent with your feelings. And, and that's going to be life sometimes. Life is not going to be perfect 24-7. But you're going to have to weigh what you want. And if you want this woman to be in your life and this is like you think she would give you the world and she's perfect for you, you need to fucking commit to that woman. Because I guarantee you, if she's willing to treat you as good as she's treating you with the way that you're treating her, imagine what would happen if somebody actually came through and committed to that. Yeah. And I I understand the not having the traditional labels and and as long as you're committed to me, like that also, like I, I understand the point behind it. But to me, that sounds like she's justifying staying around in hopes that like you are actually committed to her. Right. And that you're just afraid of a label. But I, I don't believe that's the case. I, I really don't. I, I think that a lot of this comes down to knowing that you could fucking bail if you wanted to. And there's no reason for you to stay. Right. Like, and then you can tell her, well, I, I told you that these things were going on. You can't really be, be that upset with me. Right. Right. Yeah. I wonder if there's a term for that. It's a good question. I personally would not tolerate that, especially for seven months. Yeah. And they've already broken up once. I'm not trying to repeat that. I, I would live my life. I would let him go. You need to figure out what you want. I know what I want. And you being in limbo is causing me to be in limbo. And for my life goals, that makes me uncomfortable. Not saying everybody has to live that way. People, you guys need to realize that how much can change in a year. In six months. Right. Your your world can change. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't take much for that catalyst to happen, for those changes to come about. You guys are going to have a day where, and this is a, a, you know, a made up scenario, but if you guys have a day where you're not feeling like you love her and she's trying to pour into you and you're giving her the cold shoulder and finally she goes, you know what? I don't fucking deal with this anymore. And it just happens to be the day that she runs into somebody at Trader Joe's. It's like, you know, you got really pretty eyes and she's like, oh, thank you. And they exchange phone numbers and they go on a date. And now she's got that new shiny. Two days later, it goes by. You feel good about yourself again. You're like, hey, what are you doing? And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm on a date with Mr. Trader Joe's who said, I got pretty eyes. I, I can't do this anymore. Then what are you going to do? I don't think it would happen that quickly. I think it would. So playing off that, I'm going to elaborate on your scenario. Sure. So Trader Joe's guy stops by. Mr. Goes, Trader Joe. You say Mr. that with some authority. <laughs> Mr. Trader Joe's guy. <laughs> you added the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's funny hits her with you a pretty eye she goes oh thank you and then she's standing in the checkout line she's like oh my gosh like that felt really good and now that's in her mind yep and next time she goes to trader joe's mr trader joe's guy 
just catches her eye. They maybe exchange a glance. He smiles just to acknowledge her like, I, I remember you pretty eyes. Mm. And then boom, he's in her mind again. Yep. And now it is a slow evolution of, I might see him next time. And then the slow conversations start to happen of, well, how was your day today? Yep. Yeah. Well, I got to go to Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. I ran out of salt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, but Trader that's, Joe's actually has a lot of like well-known Trader Joe items, and I can't think of a single I've one. I've only been to Trader Joe's once ever in my life because there's none in my area. Yeah. It's all, you know, Sarasota is the closest one. Yeah. It's one of those things that when you are feeling the way that 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 resentment and that detached, why am I doing this? It does not take much for that little bit of attention to get planted, yeah, and it to to settle. Like it'll it'll fucking root quick, and it can start off harmless too. Trader Joe's guy, Mister Trader Joe's guy, <laughs> might actually know that you exist, right? But now she's venting, right? And Mister Trader Joe's guy is like, no. You, you don't deserve that. You deserve so much better. You deserve so much more. Yeah. This is what I would do in that situation. Now, not only is he acknowledging that, like, hey. He's validated it. Yeah, he's validated it. He's also planting the seed of what he personally would do. Now, that's in her mind of, oh, he would do that? Yep. Well, why wouldn't my man do that? I wish my man would do that. Mr. Trader Joe's guy does that. That's a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of conversation that we could just run down. It is. Because that's how the emotional cheating happens in work environments. Mm -hmm. It it always starts off as innocent. Yep. And then they start having fun conversations and they recognize that that person can make them laugh in a way that you don't. Yeah. You guys got to work on yourselves, man. Mm -hmm. You need to pour into your person and you need to be invested in them. Yeah. And they need, it needs to be obviously without saying it has to be a two way street. I'm not saying that guys just need to pour into their women, but that that ebb and flow is necessary for a relationship to thrive. Yes. Otherwise, you will be in the roommate phase. You will not find your way out of it. You will simply exist, and you will work until you're dead. Mm -hmm. And you will not find enjoyment. You and your partner will become strangers. Your your wants and desires and the things that you are passionate about won't matter to each other. Like that's that's a problem. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Um. You need to get rid of your baggage. Yeah, I would recommend some type of therapy yeah. or just deep diving psychology on YouTube. Next one. Yeah. This one's titled Relationship. Hello, my boyfriend 25 and I 23 have been together for three years going on four. He has owned his own house for a little over three years now. He has been on his own since he was 18 and works very hard for what he has. Sounds like it. To be in 25 years old in a house? For three years. It's gangster. Mm-hmm. We met through my roommate slash best friend that lives with me and has lived with me for years. My house that she and I share is still owned by my mother who moved across the country going on five years now. We split bills because we are both in college and my mother helps out by making a piece of the house payment and we take care of the house and two dogs together. My boyfriend's house is an hour and 15 minutes away from mine. We see each other quite often, four to seven days a week. We swap out where we stay by which is convenient for each one of us. My work is right in the middle of both houses and his work is two miles from his house. He has continuously asked me to move in with him and if I could help him with some bills. But this is where it gets frustrating. If I were to move in with him, I would also have to still pay my bills at my house because my mother took a big pay cut to stay across the country with her mother to help because she's in bad shape. She's also helping pay for my grandmother's needs. I am also afraid, because she has talked about it before with me, that if I didn't stay at my house, my mother would sell the house to help her situation and money all around. Okay, so I'm going to pause. Are you unwilling to give up your own space because you're worried that the relationship's not going to make it? Right. I actually have a lot of questions and a whole lot of thoughts on this already. So yeah. um, do you, are, are we at a good pause point to, mm-hmm. to deep dive? Okay. So first and foremost, if your relationship is not stable and you're not comfortable moving in with him because you're afraid it's not going to last because I was going to go there right away too, yeah. don't move in with him. Right. Like that, that tells you a lot. Like if you're not like, I'm down for this. Mm-hmm. If you're moving in with him to help him with bills... That's a fucking problem, too, because you just said he works really hard and he's very responsible. If he wants you to be there to, like, level up financially for the both of you because 
he owns his house and there's a mortgage payment instead of a rent. And like, that's a different conversation than just be like, Hey, come help me pay my rent or my mortgage. Right. On the house thing, move, get the roommate to take over the, the rent and actually rent the home out. Well, that's actually the next part. Okay. Also, I have a roommate that I think about as well. We are also roughly a year away from finishing paying off the house that I would then own because it would be transferred over to me. See, that's a different conversation too. Mm -hmm. Your roommate's not your responsibility. No. If you're trying to hold off for a year to get this house so that it's your house and you're not wanting to move into him, like there's going to be a problem there. Okay, okay so on a, a financial basis, tell him I, I, need, I have to one more year. Mm-hmm. Until the house is paid off and my mom is giving me the house. We can Airbnb it. Right. We can rent the house out. Mm -hmm. So if you can be patient with me in, in a year, I can move in with you and we can rent my house out. That's extra income. That's passive income that all we have to do is maintain the property. Yeah. If this is if this is really what you want three years into a relationship and this is the man you plan to marry, which you haven't said that. But if that's the case, you have a future being built in your 20s. Like, yeah. This is a, a big move. This is this is actually financially a really fucking smart decision. Yeah. I, I would suffer out that one year. Yeah. An Definitely. hour's not far. It's really not. It'd be like you living in Sarasota and me driving. I drive up there every day. Yeah. I give a shit about that. It's not like I'm driving like a 1982 Ford Pinto. Like I have a nice car. I'll drive, make that drive every day. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn about that. It's an hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack a little bit. If I were to move in with him, I would also have to still pay bills at my house because my mother took a big pay cut to stay across the country to help with her mother because she's in bad shape. She's also helping my grandmother for her needs. I am also afraid that if I didn't stay at my house, my mother would sell the house to help with her situation and money all around. That's really what it comes down to. That the house could be gone. Right. That's right. What, this is what it comes down to. Because the mom's the mom's financial, sh financial situation has nothing to do with her. Mm -hmm. That house could go up for rent. And then she wouldn't have to put out because her mom is paying part of the bills. Right. She could move out and they can rent the house out for the full whatever well, amount. Right. Market value. Mm -hmm. Which could be stupid depending on where they live. Right. Here's a thought. Businessman thought. Why don't both of you move out? You rent the house out for market value take the full amount of money that gets brought in from the, the, the rent to cover the mortgage and make payments on the back end of the house. So if your mortgage is, uh, you know, 1100 a month and you're renting the house out for three grand a month or 2,500 or whatever it's worth, you then pay your 1100 a month and take everything that's left over and make a principal payment. You can pay that house off in six months. Right. And then you can continue to rent it out and not have a mortgage payment, just have to pay your taxes and pocket the rest and then pocket the rest or live off of it. Right. Yeah. And if your mom is hurting for money, she can do the same thing. Yep. Yeah. This come this the the real truth in all of that is that she doesn't want the house to be sold because she wants it. Right. And she's gonna get a free house out of it. Mm -hmm. I would have just said that. Yeah, I would have just said that too. Back into the email. Every time any of this is brought up, he gets into a mood and will tell me over and over again that I must not love him enough to move in with him. What do you think about that? I don't play that fucking game. That <clears throat> just that sentence and of, of itself on surface level irritates the shit out of me because not only are you assuming my feelings, you're telling me how I feel and you're trying to guilt trip me. I can see that. Um, That's not where my mind went, but I can see that. Yeah. Underneath that he's hurting. Like he is deeply bothered by the fact that his woman doesn't want to move in with him. If that's the problem, that's what needs to be said. That right. is what needs to be said. He could have also said, babe, I really want you here. I miss you when you're not here. I, we, I know we see each other four to seven days a week, but those four days a week, I hate when you're not here. Those, that's three days that I'm missing out on you. Right. And that's a whole different conversation versus, hey, can you help me pay some bills? Right. So the delivery there is wrong. Yes, I would say that it is. I, I would say that that is almost a guilt trip. Okay. Definitely. Do you think, because when I first heard that, I went, damn, oh boy, is really trying to like move on to the next phase of his life. Mm -hmm. And she's procrastinating, right? Yeah. Because if he owns his own home at 25 years old and he makes good money and he's 
in a three year committed relationship. Maybe he sees mar- himself marrying this chick mm-hmm. and like her not moving in is preventing that from becoming a thing. That's where my brain went. Yeah. So you're right. And that, you know, you must not love me enough to move in. I could see, I, I see that more as a man's, um, a man's inability to express his yeah. proper thoughts or That's feelings. Yeah. Surface level. Yeah. I also want to touch on, she said that he gets in a mood. Well, what kind of mood? Is he passive aggressive and saying this super shitty? Or is he like withdrawing within, gets super emotional and upset and literally believes that you do not love him enough to live with him? Is there frustration in the mood? Is it disheartened, melancholy? Right, is he just off? Right, what's the mood? Because there's a difference between disappointment and like actual being upset. Yeah. I don't know. We always say, we said a lot in season one Mm -hmm. that you should be dating to marry. Right. And that if you're investing three years, five years, 10 years into another person, and then you're, you're living with them 10 years down the road and there's been talks of marriage, but there's no ring or no date. Like, what are you doing? Right. Like you are wasting your life with somebody who doesn't want to really truly commit to you in that aspect. Mm -hmm. In this situation, what, what if, he is really trying to commit. I own my own home. I have my my money. Like I really want you here. I I, I agree that his his um, delivery delivery is very wrong. Mm-hmm. But if 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 this is really where he's going with that, maybe that needs to be a conversation she should hit him with. Like, what is your long term plans? Like, yeah. what do you want from me? And you can word it that way. Mm-hmm. Don't don't bring it up in in like a, a, a when he's pouty about the house situation, but be like, hey, w- what is your five year goal, right? Like, what do you want? What do you want your life to look like when you're thirty? Mm-hmm. See what he says, and 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 then like see where marriage falls into that, or if kids fall into that, because yeah, that could be part of the problem. And unless you actually ask those questions, he may not have the the fucking the gumption to tell you what's going on because he doesn't know how to articulate himself, right. It's crazy to me how much easier life is when you just learn how to talk to people. Right. And it all starts with figuring out your feelings and your own thoughts and what you actually want. There are times where you hit me with, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) Give me like 10 minutes to think about it because I've been focused on everybody else and everything else besides what I actually want right now in this moment. Crazy how that happens. Right. It is. It is crazy, and it's there's no more assumptions, mm-hmm. right? Like she said, th- her her he gets how did she word it? He gets upset. He gets in a mood. In a mood. Mm-hmm. That's an assumption. Mm-hmm. She's assuming that he's now pouty or he's in a mood or depressed. She has no fucking idea what's going on because he says what he says. She feels how she feels about it, and now they're butting heads. Right. So they don't know how to talk to each other. Mm-hmm. That's a fucking problem. It is. When he goes, when he starts to get in a mood and says some shit like that, the answer needs to be, I can tell that you're upset. Mm-hmm. I know that me not being here bothers you, but let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's really going on so that we can start making a plan to get me here. Because a year's not that fucking long. It's not. A lot can change in a year. A lot can change in a fucking year. Mom could decide to sell the fucking house in three months while you're still living there and paying those bills. Mm -hmm. Old boy could be like, hey, you had the opportunity to move in here six months ago and you chose not to. I don't want you here now. Yeah. I already got a new roommate. Yeah. A lot can change in a year. Yeah. But you should still be planning. Mm -hmm. I don't do the 10-year goals anymore. I have a hard time with my five-year goals because once you start visualizing things and like start taking plans and steps to reach goals, they come Mm -hmm. and it's super fucking quick. So like your five-year goal becomes a three-year goal your three-year goal you've accomplished in seven months. Like, so I, I, life goes real fucking quick. It does back into the email. Yep. I just realized that I'm wearing a black hoodie and black sweatpants. Yeah, you are. And they look like the same black. That's because they're both old as fuck. Impressive. I know. I've had these sweatpants for like eight years. Ooh, good for you. I bet they're really comfy. They are. They don't make baggy sweatpants like they used to. Mm-mm. Nope. They all have that weird like jogger thing on the bottom or they're tight. Yeah. And I don't have little legs. I'm not, no. not a little guy. My honey baked hams. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. Ooh. <laughs> I like smacking your thighs. Yeah? Yeah, like... Like a big old piece of chicken sitting there in the 
in the refrigerator section. Like walking by a bag of dog food at the store. <coughs> a little bap. You don't know why, but you just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Call me Tarzan because I like your tree trunks. <laughs> I could tell that you were sitting there debating on whether or not you were going to say that. You were like, should I say it? I'm not going to say it. Fuck it. I'm yeah. going to say it. <laughs> I did. That is 100% what just happened. That's funny. I love that you can read me like that. Everybody really enjoys my uh, my impersonation of you. And you do a really good job. Because I pay attention to your mannerisms. Yeah. Yeah. The stupid yeah. things I say. Shit's fun. It's fun. I'm glad you have fun. Yeah, I mean, why why wouldn't I? Like, e- even if I'm having a bad day and you start to be silly and, like, I, I could see how that would annoy people, mm-hmm. right? Like, you're having a really bad day and your your person's just being goofy and fun and, like, you're going through it. And you just want to be like, can you leave me alone for a little bit so that I can process? When I see that, I'm like, okay, she sees that I'm going through it and she's trying to pull me out of it. Like, yeah. it's perspective. I can, I can wallow in my own self-pity or I can fucking go, hey, oh, hey, there's a lifeline. And you can just pull me right the fuck out of that and like yeah. change my thought pattern by by being happy and being goofy and being you. Mm-hmm. So stepping into the sunlight after being in the shade is like a 10 degree temperature difference. Mm-hmm. Warm up your soul a little bit. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like an oven mitt for my soul. A hand, what do they call them? Uh, uh, hand heaters for my soul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry again. Already? Yeah. We literally just ate. I know. I don't know what it is. Food was gross. We got to get it. We have to get a meal, a meal delivery people to sponsor the podcast. Yeah. I hope they have soup. Yeah. I don't know. I love soup. Well, you can Campbell some soup. Campbell. You look like I just insulted you. A little bit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Did you not taste that tomato soup I made? Yeah. I, I. I'll eat soup out of a can. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and, and and like, you can hate on Campbell's all you want. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Did you taste my soup? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know how you work under these conditions. I need my manager. <laughs> I am slightly offended. My tomato soup is so much better than anything you can get out of a can. I didn't say that your soup was bad. I didn't say that it was not bad. That shrug went meh. I will eat. Oh, you did it again. It is what it is. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to cry about this. (laughs) My feelings aren't hurt. You, You don't have like broke people food that you enjoy eating. Because I will fuck up a can of Campbell's tomato soup. Like, I, I will like, drink that shit out of the can. I do like bread sandwiches. See? Butter sandwiches. That's what it is. Some some spicy chicken ramen with mayo on bread. It's like a spicy chicken noodle sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I like taking white bread and saturating it in butter after it's toasted and putting brown sugar yeah. on top of it and cinnamon. We used to do garlic powder yeah. on white bread and just mash it with a spoon to make garlic bread when we were kids. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm really easy when it comes to my soups. Your your tomato soup is good. It's not as good as your grilled cheese sandwiches, though. Oh, you enjoyed that? I love the grilled cheese. Yep. That sounds really good. Do you want that for dinner mm-hmm. tomorrow? No. Can't have it no more. I'm trying to bring sexy back. Yeah. I'm currently plus size sexy. I yeah. need to, I need to be big sexy. Yeah, I'm me just too. Not not content at the moment. I have like pudge going on. I know I'm cute. I want to be hot. I think you are very hot as you start showing some more shoulder. Yeah, because I know you like that. (laughs) People have already turned this podcast off. Maybe we should just go on to the next podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Or back into the email. That works too. I spend a week at his house and he gets into this awful mood when I have to go home to get clothes and check on stuff, get mail, work clothes, schoolwork, etc. I have reassured him constantly that I would love to, but there is a lot that would get blown up if I did. And if I also helped him with stuff around his house, I would be broke. 
He gets very ill with me over it, and we have talked and fussed about it multiple times. It gets brought up almost once a week. So I love how you, it seems like you've actively avoided actually describing the emotion he is feeling. Right. Right. I, I wonder if this really does come down to finances. Right. Like cause, right. Cause if it comes down to finances and this is a financial struggle for him, that's the conversation that needs to be had. Well, how would that get a second job, bro? Like spend less time with your woman, get a second job and make your ends meet. Then you don't have to worry about that. She can come over when she can because you'll be working a second job to make sure that you're taken care of. Yeah. And a year from now, when she's got her own place and she starts renting that house out and moves in with you, you've got an extra two thousand dollars a month of income that was unaccounted for in the beginning. Right. And that's, you know. That's some people's monthly earnings. It is. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't like that. I don't I don't like that there's not a clear really understanding of what he's going through mm -hmm. because she hasn't had the discussion about it. Right. It is all assumption based. And it, it does go back to finances. It she, always goes back. Yes. She said that when she goes home after a week to get clothes and schoolwork and take care of things around the house, he gets salty about it. That sentence says he doesn't want you to leave. Mm -hmm. Like he wants you there. He's going to miss you. But then you go to the finances. Well, if I started helping him around the house with his things, then it would fuck me financially over here. So what is it? Is it that he wants you there and doesn't want you to go home because he enjoys having you around? Or does he just want you around for finances? Mm -hmm. Those are two very different things. Yeah. And, and like that relationship would be very different depending on those things. Mm -hmm. The way he treated her would be very different depending on those things. Yeah. So they've been together for almost four years. That, that's a long time to be doing the sleepovers. It is. A very long time. He might be just absolutely exasperated and just over the fact that, I don't know, sleepovers just feels like a casual. Like, yeah, we're committed to each other and we spend a lot of time together. I'll see you next week after you go stay at your house for a bit. Yeah. That's how I view that. Yeah. You, you know, I, but... I also think because of the way that I, I perceived some of this email is that mm -hmm. he is ready to take that next step. Yeah. It, it could solely be about the finances and I could be wrong as a motherfucker, mm -hmm. but if he's really trying to like settle down and, and like do the ring and do the wife and do the kids and do the life, can't do that if you're living an hour and a half away. I mean, you can, we know people that live in different States that are married mm -hmm. and they're making it work, but that conversation has to be had. It does. What is your intent? What is your five-year plan? Where do you see yourself in three years? Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself next year? What is your intent with me? Do you even plan on moving in with me or do you plan on living in your own house this whole time? I'm sure that he's probably said that to her. Yeah. Because there's a, a communication breakdown. Back into the email? Uh, Yeah, but before you do that, I, I want this is a good opportunity to talk about if you are a parent and you have kids and your kids start getting angry no matter how old they are, explore that. What are you feeling right now? Yeah. Why are you talking to me like right. this? What is the underline? Oh, I'm frustrated. Why are you frustrated? What happened that make you feel that way? Mm -hmm. Because when they become adults and they have to communicate what's going on inside of them, they need to be able to articulate themselves properly. And break down. And when, they're, when you're told, suck it the fuck up, shove it the fuck down and get on with your life because you're a man, nobody gives a shit, you never explore that. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to rebuild a carburetor, but you're a computer technician and you've never held a carburetor in your hand. Yeah. Back into the email. Currently, every time we spend more than 24 hours apart, he turns into a totally different person. He's mad about everything, starts arguments, will go into a rage. Then when he calms down, he always blames it on not being able to see me. That's the problem. That's very childish temper tantrum behavior. It is. He's I, not getting his way. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I personally enjoy getting a day by myself every now and then, but I don't get that often because he feels that if I am free and not at work or at class, I should be at his house waiting for him so we can see each other for a little while. Personally, two and a half hours of driving for 30 minutes to one hour of seeing each other when we just saw each other the day before is too much. Yeah, I wouldn't make a two hour round trip for a 30 minute visit. Oh, I'm good on that. I mean, yeah. I, I probably would. I wouldn't do it all the time, but that's, that's different though. Why would you be... Why aren't you staying the night over there? If you're going to yeah. make the drive, why are you there for 30 minutes to leave? Yeah, that's strange. Right? Like if you have shit that you need to get done. I'm not driving that Just way. do the shit and then go over afterwards and have a sleepover. Drive the hour home in the morning. Yeah. 
or drive the 30 minutes to work and then go home after work. Right. Right. Because she lives in between. Mm -hmm. There's more to this. There is so much more to this. But I'm always made out to be the bad person for not making the drive. He works six to seven days a week, 12 to 15 hour shifts starting at 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. So I don't expect him to make the ride a lot. But I hate being ridiculed for not being around him 24-7. When the topic is not brought up, he is amazing. One of the best guys you could ever meet. Now it is starting to eat at me, making me feel as if I should just do it and struggle and make it work. But to make that work, my roommate would lose her house, and I may lose a house that I have lived in for years, and that I have put so much money and time towards to make mine, so I would always have it. The house is also on the river, a perfect vacation house, or either a backup that would be paid off and in perfect condition if ever needed. I'm at a loss, and I need help on how to understand him and maybe get through to him. How to help him understand how difficult it is to be in the situation I am in. And how to understand his emotions when it comes to this. I may lose a house that I have lived in for years and that I have put so much money and time towards to make mine so I would always have it. So say he's not willing to move out of his house. He works 13 to 15 hours a day. He is busting his ass for that house. If you hit him with, well, I want to live here. This house is paid off. You come and move in with me. What is the conversation going to look like if he goes, no? Like, I, I have spent almost four years driving myself into the ground to have this. I'm not going to give it up like that. So now there's a new conflict because you already have it in your mind that you're going to keep this house forever. And you said it can be a vacation house. I'm not vacationing an hour and 15 minutes away from my home. Right. I'm not either. It needs to be a rental home. Right. It, she said, that's all very valid. All, all of that's very valid, especially the vacation in an hour away thing. Mm-hmm. If you use that home as a vacation home, it's paid off and you live with your boyfriend, you do have a backup. And is that what you really want? You just don't want to leave this house and you want to make sure that you have a backup plan in case things go wrong. Yeah. And if you sell the house, you don't have that backup if things go wrong because that's also a conversation. Mm -hmm. She said on there, um, I how did she word it? I don't know how to tell him how I'm feeling or explain this to him. How did she word that? I'm at a loss and I need help on how to understand him and maybe get through to him. How to help him understand how difficult it is to be in the situation that I am in. Okay. You guys need to have a have a talk. Like this needs to be an open dialogue. Mm -hmm. This needs to be more goal oriented. It right. needs to not be feeling based. You need to understand why he feels the way he feels. And you're not going to understand that if he can't fucking tell you why he feels the way he feels. Right. And if this solely comes down to income and money, this isn't worth it. No. Keep your fucking house. Call it quits. Mm -hmm. Find a guy that lives close to town and do your own thing until you're ready to to do whatever it is that you're ready to do. Yeah. If you want to understand things and you guys want to figure out a plan that's going to be beneficial to both of you, you need to have a goal conversation. That house, if it's on the water, it's worth money. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you it's worth more than what you're paying in your mortgage. Yeah. I think it would be stupid as fuck to lose that house. Yeah, I would definitely turn it into an Airbnb, <clears throat> especially with it being on a river. Yep. Especially if there's water access. Right. If it is a little seating area, maybe a fireplace out back, and there's direct pathway to the river. Kayaks. Right. Boats, you whatever. could do $1,500 a week for an Airbnb Easily. like that. Yeah. Easily. That's low. Mm -hmm. That's low. The Airbnb that we just stayed at in Tennessee was two grand for seven days. And it was it was on a highway. It was not no a big backyard. piece of property. It was on a mountainside that was super fucking hilly. There was the fireplace was not usable. Like mm -hmm. I I I have personally rented cabins that are four or five thousand dollars for a week. If you have a nice home that's on the water, that is a residual income that you don't have to work for. Yeah. And you can even hire a management company that that does Airbnb cleanings mm -hmm. to like do everything. And they take twenty or thirty percent and you just fucking own the property and pay your taxes on it. Yeah. You take that full year of, of money that you've made and you reinvest in a second property and eventually you own 10 fucking homes mm -hmm. and you've got an Airbnb business and you're banking. Like, but this, this, this issue is it's solely a communication. He's not articulating himself in a way that she's able to understand him and they haven't really laid their goals or expectations out. Right. If she has been like, look, I get the house in one year and in one year I'm going to rent the house out and then I can move in. 
and he's still acting like a bitch over it, that's a problem. Like at that point, it, it, there's a bigger issue here. Mm-hmm. If we were three years into our relationship and still living separate and I was ready to get married and settle down and you were like, I get a house in a year and it's mine, paid for. Can you wait for a year? I mean, yeah, I can. This sucks. I am i don't enjoy you not being here. I get it. Because if we're going to get married, that extra property is revenue. Mm-hmm. It's something that we can leave to our kids or sell later on in life. Like there's a whole lot of things that could play out with that. This comes down to... How bad do you guys want to be together? Right. Right. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like Because that? I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to put myself in that situation. I know how much I hate it when you're not around. Like, I legit miss you when you are when you go to the grocery store. Like, I don't like it when you're not within parameter of me or, you know, within a line of sight, yeah. I'll say that. But I also understand life. And I understand that there are ways to level up. And if you have to suffer for six months or two years or five years, to get where you really want to fucking go, you better buckle up, son. This will be a rough mm-hmm. five years. But when that five years comes up and you've reached all those goals and you've got great things happening, that little bit of suffering, that's where that's that's life. Like yeah. that's business, that's friendship, that's relationships. You think that it's all gonna be fucking rainbows and sunshine. You're wrong, bitch. Like that's not how life works. It's not how nature works. Right. You are going to have some fucking conflict. You're going to have drama. You're going to have obstacles you've got to overcome. You got to be able to talk to the person that's trying to weather the storm with you. Mm-hmm. You can't have, you can't be captain in a ship and not yelling commands and expect everyone to just know what the fuck's going on. Like yeah. you have a role to communicate. You got your guy up at the, the crow's nest. If he's not like iceberg, you hit a fucking iceberg and you know, Titanic sinks. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you ha- that communication is necessary. If he was like, hey, you guys, and then they hit an iceberg, they'd be like, why didn't you yell iceberg? Right. I don't get it. Actually, the sinking of Titanic was a massive miscommunication. Yeah, I think it was a um, an inside job. Yeah, the Rockefellers and whatnot. Yep. Yeah, the guy on the Titanic who passed with the Titanic was against their big banking idea. Yep, and he owned 40% of the mortgages in New York City when it yeah. happened. So with him out of the picture, they can continue doing what they wanted. Yep. yep. And sure. here we are today in modern America. Yep. With $33 trillion in debt because we print money out of nowhere. Anyways, <laughs> next email, please, because we are not a conspiracy theorist podcast. <laughs> we could be. We could be. Let us know in the comments if you guys want us to be. And people love it when you do that shit. The conspiracy theories? Yep. And your oh murder mystery and all the shit that you're doing for Patreon. People love it. Oppenheimer really just messed with my mind. It was a good movie. Oh my gosh, with straws. Talking about JFK, get out of here. Stop oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. deep dive that so much now. That's funny. This one is also titled Relationship. Oh man, it's a twofer. Hi, I saw your TikTok, Chris, and I love the advice you and your wife give. I'm reaching out for some advice for my relationship of almost six years. My boyfriend and I have a two year old and a six week old. Last week, we sat down to talk about what our plan was with work and childcare. He informed me that he wants me to work a night slash weekend job so that I can continue to take care of the house and kids during the day and make money at night. Why? Okay, okay let's just stop right fucking there. Yeah, that's not going to work out the way he thinks that's going to work out. Are you poor? Right? Because I can understand that being a necessity. Mm-hmm. Like, like. We got two kids. We fucking spend more than we make. We're leveraged on everything. Credit cards are maxed out. Car payments are like two months past due. And I'm constantly concerned about a repo and like can't pay for daycare anymore. Right. Daycare is fucking expensive for a two year old and a six month old. What, what are we doing? What are we going to do? Like do one of us is going to have to work nights so the kids can have a sitter here at all times. I'll work days. You work nights. Hopefully we get to see each other on the weekend. This is a temporary problem, right? Or... You stay at home with the kids and I'm going to get two fucking jobs and and, and I'm going to do whatever I can to try to make ends meet to get us out of this. I can understand that necessity Mm -hmm. simply going, I don't want to pay for daycare. So you get to work nights and weekends and I'll work a regular nine to five and we just never see each other. That does not fucking add up to me. Right. Well, it also wouldn't work out if she's working nights and say she goes in from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., Right. And then he has to be to work by 9 a.m. She has a 30 minute drive home. She's going to get what, an hour of sleep? Right. Because she got to be up with the kids. Right. He, he, you know, that's, and that's, that's a whole nother discussion. I didn't even think about that. 
didn't even think about that because he would get to sleep at night when the kids are asleep. Right, he would. You know, he'd have to get up every once in a while with the baby, but like... He's definitely getting more hours of sleep than she would be. Right. And then people could say, well, you sleep when the kids sleep. Okay, well, a newborn definitely will be sleeping majority of the day. That two-year-old, though? Yeah, not a chance. Mm -mm, jumping off the walls, Tarzan yelling. Yep. You might maybe get an hour and a half to two-hour nap. But then... Husband gets home at 6 p.m. You have to turn around and go into work at 7. Right, exhausted, and then be up all night. Did she actually say that so that the kids didn't have to go to daycare? Or did I just make that up? Uh, that was not said. What, can, well, it does say child care. Okay. Go ahead and just spread yourself so thin, babe, that like you don't enjoy your life, you don't enjoy your kids, and you definitely don't enjoy me. Right. But I'm going to get to sleep every night, play my video games when the kids go to bed until I'm ready to go to bed so that I can get up and go to work the next day or maybe have a couple of drinks with the fellas, like yeah. get to get to do me. It's not that hard. Suck it up, bitch. Like mm -hmm. that's the mentality that I have from that. I, I do not like this email. I don't like it either. Also, the thought of putting a six week old in a child care bothers me. Is, is that a thing? Can you do that? Is, did you say six weeks? Six week old. Yeah. She's already back to work. Well, they're talking about it. She's she just hit the first healing mark. Right. So. I had C-sections, and because of my C-sections, I had to heal for eight weeks. Um, majority of vaginal births are six-week healing time. So if she was like the typical... Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Earlier, you had a moment. You're like, should I say this? Fuck it. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. This is... Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm about to say this on the podcast. <laughs> Unless you were born via C-section, you've had a vagina stretched over your head. Right. Yeah. That's where my mind went. <laughs> You're like, I had C-section, so it was eight weeks. Yeah. And all I could think of is Ace Ventura and the rhino ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I actually came out the exact same way he did. Yeah, like this? <laughs> well, didn't his arm come out first? Yeah, that's how I came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> but if she had the like easiest, everything went great. She just hit her healing mark of six weeks. Physical healing. Correct. Physical. Yeah. Hormones are still not right. Oh, Postpartum gosh, no. depression. All of that could be in full swing. Milk. I mean, hormones are definitely full swing. Right. Milk production. Like, there's mm -hmm. a whole lot of things that are still happening. Yeah. Okay. And. Another thing to think about, so I breastfed, and when I went back to work, I had to pump. And it is scientifically proven when you pump versus actually latching, your milk production will go down. So if that is also a problem for you and you have to start supplementing with formula, formula is not cheap. Right. That could create a whole new financial problem, especially if you dry up within a week or two. I wonder if any of these conversations have been had in that house. Right. And I, I ask that because you get so used to having your perception of the world. Right. Well, she's doing good. You know, she's doing the mom thing and I'm working and, mm -hmm. you know, we, we get to have date nights and things are good. And you just think that things are going to be that way. This is why people get in credit card debt. Well, I got money. I just pay the credit card bill. Like, oh, shit. Now I've got $40,000 in credit card debt and I only make 32000 a year. Like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, I wonder if these conversations are actually had. I wonder if he's been like, hey, how's your postpartum going? Probably not. Right? Like, I, I would ask that. Oh, I was never asked that. You were also young. Young right. men don't know these things. No, but when I think of every woman that I've spoken to or I have interacted with that have had children, they've talked about that, like, after birth and the, the months after it. I cannot recall a single woman saying my husband asked me those kinds of questions mm -hmm. where they checked on their mental health or... Yeah. I wouldn't. I didn't ask those questions when I was younger either. Yeah. 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. Like yeah. most men that are in those age ranges don't understand any of that shit. Mm -hmm. um, they're also very self-serving and selfish. Like there's, you know what I mean? So like there's a, that, that's one of those older men thing. Like mm -hmm. I, I know about postpartum depression. I fucking researched it. Yeah. I want to understand what's going on. Why, why did all of those fights happen? Oh, well, you know, you were selfish and you were kind of a dick, but there's also all of this. Like yeah. it's, there's a scale here. Um, and I understand that now. Mm -hmm. So I would be asking those questions. I, I would be asking a lot of questions and I, I, I don't know. I really hope that men that listen to this podcast, hear these conversations and go, 
my woman's pregnant. Mm -hmm. I should be asking her if I can rub her feet after at the end of the day. Like I should be asking her how her hormones are. Like she's doing the hard work right now. Like I, I had the fun part of the job. Next year and a half of her life is going to suck. Yeah. Back into the email. Mm -hmm. I would like to say before having our newest daughter, I did have a full time job and took care of the house on my own. But at seven months pregnant, I had to be put on bed rest. So the financial burden has been put on his shoulders alone. The job part does bother me a little bit because I am doing everything else at home while he goes out with his friends or goes on fishing trips. See? I can work. That's not a problem per se. The problem is that when I brought up to him helping around the house and with the girls, he said that he doesn't know why I need help because all I do every day is sit on my ass. He said there is always a load of laundry left in the dryer that I don't have dishes to do anymore because I got myself a dishwasher. Whoa, wait, because I got myself a dishwasher. Yeah. Okay. That I don't spend enough time playing with our two-year-old. This brought me to tears as I stayed up all night applying for jobs. The next day, I got a call for a job interview to work 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., making okay money. I told him about this, and he is upset because it would be cutting it close to the time that he has to leave for work at 7.30. And he is unwilling to talk to his boss about coming in a few minutes later. This has led me to thinking that maybe this relationship has run its course. At this point, I feel like it would be easier to just be a single mother. No, it wouldn't. But, oh my god um dude that just pissed me off like internal rage that really bothers me i, I don't know this woman we we i don't i don't even know the name of the email or like i haven't read this couldn't even tell you what dot com it's from that's a fucking problem what is all of it he goes out and goes fishing and does things and says that all she does is sit around on her ass having children is is time consuming as fuck a two-year-old doesn't go to daycare. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can. They can go to daycare. But if you're not working and you just had a baby and you're doing the mom thing, two-year-old's not going to daycare. Yep. So he, let's, let's, let's financial break this down and then get into everything else. A decent daycare. Uh, there's like three sentences left. Okay. I'm just going to read it. Am I wrong for thinking that? Am I being selfish? I don't want to give up, but I've also already almost left twice in the past, and I'm starting to think about how many chances I should give. Thank you for reading, and hopefully you can give me some perspective. If you've almost left twice in the past, why did you have another kid with him? Right. Why did you have any children with him? Didn't say how long they were together. Didn't say whether they were married. Been together for almost six years. Not married? Boyfriend. Okay. So they have a two-year-old and a six-week-old. So if you left... If you almost left four years ago, you chose to stay and have two children. Yep. So now, not only are you going to make your life harder, you're going to put your children through something that you should have left right. the first time you thought about it. Yep. And your kids are going to see the way that he behaves as a parent and is either going to mimic that or, you know, they yeah. potentially mimic that. So let, let's look at this from a financial standpoint, first and foremost, right? Because okay. it, it obviously... He's bearing the financial burden mm -hmm. is the way she said it. And she, he wants her to go back to work. If she goes back to work, unless she makes enough money to profit after daycare for both of those kids, you're still living in a deficit. The only difference is, is the mother is no longer there to properly raise the children. You're giving the kids to other people to raise. Right. right? So we know that you can spend anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 a month for two kids at a daycare, mm -hmm. you know? unless you've got like some sort of skilled job or a trade and you're working 40 to 50 hours a week, you're going to be in that ballpark. At that point, why are you working? Real shit, financial, you, you are going to struggle either way. The only difference is that the kids are not going to be present in the home mm -hmm. and you two aren't going to see each other. Okay, so that's that's the financial aspect of it. The other aspect of it is I also believe that it's not super strenuous to be a stay-at-home mom. And I don't give a fuck how much you guys hate me for saying that shit. You're not like digging ditches. You're not swinging hammers. You're not under a car busting your knuckles. You're not in the fucking heat. But I also understand that there is a lot of things that go on. Do you have more break time? Absolutely, because you can throw things in your dishwasher that you bought yourself. 
as she put it. Mm -hmm. And you can throw a load of laundry in the fucking dryer and you can put the two year old down for a nap and maybe get a little bit of downtime while the fucking six week old is sleeping or the six week old is sleeping and the two year old is bouncing off the fucking walls and you're, Hey, don't put that in your mouth. Get the fork away from the electrical socket. Like I can't take a shit. Yeah. Like congratulations, husband. You can go sit in a porta potty and though that may be disgusting and you may get blue water on your ass. I can't even go to the fucking bathroom during the daytime. Like it's been three days since I've showered. Right. Right. So let's be realistic. Like, mm -hmm. is it, is it, do you get some downtime? Absolutely. You can sit and play on your phone a little bit here and there. Sure can. But does that mean that you're not fucking doing everything or, you know, you don't have things planned all day long. You want to talk about how much harder it is for me to go to the grocery store with two fucking kids. And it is for you to go to work every day. Because you grab your lunchbox, go get in the car and go to fucking work. And I got to load two babies up, baby bags, diapers, pull-ups, fucking milk, bottles, binkies. Extra clothes. Right. Because somebody's going to puke on me. I fucking know it. Mm -hmm. Like, then you got to get the, 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 the two-year-old while the six-week-old's six in a car seat. Get the fuck, clip him in. Get the other kid in a car. Your little Deal fucking, with a temper tantrum because he doesn't want to be in his car seat. Right. Your your 15-minute store run has become a 45-minute fucking process. Like, let's let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. Do you have downtime? Absolutely. You fucking sure do have downtime during the day if you've got two kids and you're a stay-at-home mom. You do. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same thing. You can't... It's not apples and... You know, it, it, you can't compare apples. It's apples and oranges. And the other side of all of that is that he's not present. No. Which means even if you do go back to work, who's going to take care of the kids? Because he's hanging out with his buddies and going fishing and doesn't believe that you need a break... How are you going to co-parent? He's right. already not present. So now you're going to remove yourself from the home so the kids don't have a parent present? Mm -hmm. I'm annoyed. That just, that did it. Yeah. That did it. Are you done with your tangent? I'm done. Okay. You can have one now. <laughs> I'm not going to have a tangent. Um, but I don't remember what I said <laughs> verbatim before you went off. But I said what I said. So other women in a situation right now where they're contemplating leaving and they're actually not happy, you need to do it before you have kids. I agree. Because you're going to be in this exact same situation that this emailer is in. And it is not a fun situation to be in. You know, when I left our kid's father, stepdad, that was one of the most terrifying things I ever did because there are no longer four hands in the household. There's no longer four ears in the household. If I'm asleep and I miss something while I'm sleeping. Oh, it's the hot tub. Yeah, let me close that door. It does become a lot harder. And even though there was more freedom, like spiritually or mentally, there is that new stressor of I am the only person in this household to see these children. There is no one here to tap in. There is no one here to give me a break. Now I, I would do it all over again. I would go through those hardships and that stress and the nights of crying myself to sleep and the battles of should I go back just to have somebody here to help me, even though I no longer love this person. I wouldn't look for a job. I would not start applying to jobs and be like, look, I found this. Look, I found that. I would have the conversations that you and I discussed in all of this. If you are breastfeeding and you go from breastfeeding to getting formula, when I had to buy formula for our son, he was a preemie, so he had to have specialized formula. I was spending almost $300 a month in formula. Wow. It is not cheap. And now with inflation and everything, I saw a can of formula for like 50 bucks the other day. What? Yeah. Insane. It might have been a specialty formula, but... It's still a lot of money. I caught a glimpse of it and I was like, no... I think that, that we should point out that your situation was, was not based off of you going back to work. And this one is like, she's, she's like, you know, maybe I should just be a single mom mm -hmm. because he, he's acting the way that he is and not present. And she's doing it by herself. Right. Financially though, you're not doing it by yourself. She's not. Right. So if you want to be a single mother, how do you think that's going to work? If you're already struggling and you have another person, even if they're not helping, mm -hmm. The way that you want them to help, they are still contributing something, whether it's finances or you get to take a shit or yeah. whatever, right? They go to the store so that you don't have to. There are still contributions being made from said person. So if you remove yourself from that simply because you're not getting enough help, you are removing the help. Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense to have the conversation to try to figure out where things need to go? Right. Like what can we do for this? Right. I would ask him why he resents you. 
Yeah. Do you feel like you're working super fucking hard and I'm taking advantage of you? Because maybe he feels that way. And if that's the case, he can, he can talk to you about it Mm -hmm. and you don't get mad. Don't freak out. Don't get defensive. Let him voice it all. And be like, I'm sorry that you feel that way. What can I do to make you feel less like that while I can still be home and be a mom? Yeah. How do we solve this? Because it's it's not fuck you. Mm -hmm. It's fuck this. He probably doesn't know how to explain that to you. You're going to get defensive if he's resentful. I, I mean, I, I, it, everybody's natural. Like, well, I do this. It doesn't solve anything. Mm-hmm. If you do this and I do that and we're, we're screaming at each other about what we both do, what's not getting done is still not getting done. That's not helpful. Yeah. I would find out wh- where the resentment's coming from. And then, when, and then when you have that conversation and you go, okay, I can start doing this and start doing this and start doing this to make things easier on me. Cause I have some, some things that I need to get worked out too. Like, can you not go out with your friends every night of the week and not go fishing on the weekends and be present with the children so that in the event that I need to get another job, they have a parent who's present and not simply home. Mm-hmm. Right. Because this is not a fuck you. This is a fuck this. And we need to figure this out. Right. That email really got to me. I'm, I'm like internally frustrated right now. Yeah. A lot of things can really be solved. If you stop getting defensive, stop being a victim. Mm-hmm. And start trying to problem solve. Yeah. Don't think, don't take things personally. Right. If somebody's attacking you, mm-hmm. of course you're going to feel that way. But sometimes it's okay to go, hey, wait a minute. What's really going on here? Yeah. Help me understand. You're obviously upset. And, and it could be things that I have done, but unless I understand why they upset you, I can't change my behavior. When I left my ex, I didn't have a job. I know. You didn't have a place to go either. Nope. It's hard. It is. It was very hard. I remember I was sitting on the staircase outside of my ex-mother-in-law's apartment crying to my mom like I'm a fucking failure. I have two kids in diapers. I don't have a job. I'm couch surfing on my ex-husband's mother's couch. Like it was rough. And if that's something you're willing to deal with, I mean, nobody's situation is going to be like my situation. Right. But it will definitely be a stressor and there will be trials. And if that's something that you're willing to weather through and not take it out on your children and you truly believe that you'll be happier in that situation, struggling on your own until you're able to make it without him, then all the power to you. If you are only thinking about leaving him because he's being an asshole right now, that's life. Right. Sometimes y'all are going to be assholes to each other. And unless you can get to the root of what he's really going through, like you said, I don't think leaving would really be the answer to all of it unless that conversation's had. And then you do decide like this is not going to work. I wonder, I, I, I don't understand his mindset, right? Because that being a stay at home wife is a flex. It is. Right. In, in the social circle with other men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In a social circle with other men, there are two types of men. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this one? I'm ready. Yeah. There are the men who will be like, I, I got, I'm, I got my wife as a stay at home. I pay for everything. Totally fucking support her. Right. And the friends are going to be like, bro, you're a simp. Blah, 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 blah. Or they're going to be like, hell yeah. You're right. The ones who are like, you're a simp, blah, 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 are the ones who are upset that they can't provide that. And they can't say that they were able to, to retire their woman. Mm-hmm. There is in my opinion, no bigger flex as a husband, right? As a husband than being able to retire your wife. You don't want to work anymore? Don't worry, I got it. Mm-hmm. I, I will make sure that everything is taken care of. You still get your hair and nails done. We still have money for vacations. I got this, right? Like that's huge. As a husband, as a father, there's different brags. Like, But as a husband, that is the biggest flex a man can have. And if the woman's, for all of you women out there who are like, well, I don't need a man to do that. Well, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your man. Yep. So- <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That that is a huge flex for us. And and those men who are like, I, I want to retire my woman, but she makes more money than I do and she's gonna be the breadwinner and I'm just gonna be here. That's your life. If you're cool with that, cool. Mm-hmm. Like you may have a bigger flex somewhere else in life, but as a my opinion of what a man is, that's the case. Yeah. I I, I would probably feel different if I had a multimillionaire woman and never had to work again and could play video games and be a neckbeard. But even that, my personality would not allow you to take care of me. No. I, I don't think I could do it. I would want to like level up 
knowing that you've got that kind of money, like let's open this business, let's do this, let's do that. And I would start trying to make moves so that I can become a millionaire and then we can have multiple, multiple millions. You know what I mean? Instead of it just being your money. Mm -hmm. But I know that if, if I met a woman, like if you were that woman and you had all that kind of money when I met you and our roles were reversed and you were like, you don't have to work no more. <laughs> no. Yes, I fucking do. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not letting you support me. I'm not going to call you daddy. I call you mama, but <laughs> oh, mama. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Oh man, I don't. I don't think that I. My pride is. It would be too hard to swallow. I would choke with. It. I would choke on it, trying to swallow it down. Yeah. There's no way that I could allow somebody to do that. There have been times in my life where I have been broken, hurting, and I've had to have people help me. And those times in my life, like I never felt like a man in those moments. I felt like a child. Like I can't take care of myself. I can't feed myself. This is not mm -hmm. the way a man is supposed to live. And and I believe that. I'm, I, so anyways, the whole reason that I brought all of that up is because I wonder why he is not bragging to his friends like I was able to, I've got two kids and a wife at home and I'm taking care of everything and I can still go fishing on the weekend with my friends because life is that fucking good because everyone's needs are being met. Right. Money is being made. I'm not so stressed out that I have to get a second job. Right. In that scenario with that man and that woman with those two kids, he should get a second job. She should stay home mm -hmm. to continue to take care of the kids and he should get a second job yep. because let's say he makes $5,000 a month and he gets a second job and brings in an extra 1500 and doesn't have to spend that $1,500 a month on daycare. That $1,500 a month can go into a savings fund. It can go into a Roth IRA. It could go into a college fund. Like you should be doing that, that job, bro. You should be, mm -hmm. you should be doing that. If you're already working 60 hours a week, that creates a problem and I could see that. And if you're financially stressed, that's a different conversation, but that's not what that sounded like to me. Yeah. It sounded like he's bitter that she doesn't have to work and he does. I could never. What? I couldn't be with a man like that. No. Mm -mm. Elaborate. So it's been six weeks and he's already like, okay, we need to figure out how you're getting back into the workforce. America is the only country that only gives six weeks of maternity leave. Yeah. Every other country is at least the minimum three months or more. I know that there's a country that does a year and a half of paid maternity leave. I don't think that, I don't think that a company should be required to pay for maternity leave. Yeah. I don't, I think it's the healthcare system that does that. Well, that's a different conversation because that's yeah. your tax dollars and countries where there is paid maternity leave and the mm -hmm. government gives you money. That's covered by the taxes. Your taxes go up. Right. So like for depending on your tax bracket, I know people that are in our, we pay between 45 and 50% of everything that we make towards taxes, right? Across the board. So <clears throat> I know that, that that number can be skewed based off of your write-offs and all of that shit, but like speaking solely on us, if your government system does that, you have to pay more in taxes. Your taxes are going to be 60 or 70% of your income. You look at countries like Sweden, they have a very high tax bracket because of college and the medical system. Right. But for a corporation or a business to have to pay you money for you to not work, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. if, you ha if you chose to get pregnant in your life and you can't work anymore as a business, I need somebody there, I'm going to replace you. Yeah. That, that's, that's just the way it is. I'm not in your bedroom and I'm not in your home. You come to work. And when you go home, you have your entire life. As a business owner, the business is my fucking life. I don't get to go home at the end of the night. I don't get to take vacations the way that everybody else does because even on vacation, I still got to fucking work. Unless you're like a, you know, a multimillionaire CEO kind of thing. It's a very different lifestyle, but most small business owners and blue collar workers don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it should be on the on the the business to pay for that kind of shit. I think that women who are planning on getting pregnant and, and actually doing that should just quit take as much time as they fucking need and go back to work. Right. I'm also going to say that if you can't afford to take that time off as maternity leave unpaid and be a mom, you shouldn't be breeding because what happens when there's a fucking emergency and you can't feed your kid? Dads need to be like, hey, we're going to have a baby. I got $40,000 in the bank, which is six months of our life. So if an emergency happens or I'm out of work for the next six months, we're covered. Mm -hmm. I, can, I make enough money at my current job to pay for you and the baby that's coming. Let's have a baby. That should be the conversation that's had. Yeah. But people don't don't plan pregnancies anymore. No, they don't. I'm going to get a bunch of hate for that whole, for all of that. And I'm okay with it because I, full chest, I believe that. I don't think it's somebody else's responsibility. To, I don't think that there should be a minimum wage. 
Mm-hmm. I think minimum wage should be zero. I think that you should get paid what you're worth and what the job entails. Yeah. Don't like how much you're offering for that job. So I'm going to go over here and get a different one because this guy's offering me more money. Mm-hmm. And then when that guy can't find workers and this guy over here has 30 workers and this guy's got none because he can't pay anybody, he's going to start having to raise his wages to be competitive with the other people who are paying mm-hmm. to get some of those workers or pay them more. And then you have a living wage that's actually being made because there's a competitive market. Right. You want your prices of, of, of consumer items to go down, like like prescription drugs. As soon as a generic can be had after a patent has worn off, then generics can be sold. All these companies start producing that drug. Mm-hmm. The cost of that drug goes way the fuck down. It's no different. The only difference is it's pay going out to the community versus coming into the business. Right. Let's do one more. Okay. I'm a little calmer now. I, I've, I've been able to talk about other things and I'm, I'm very warm though, but I don't want to take this off because I look good in a hoodie. You do look good in a hoodie. Yeah. Want to open that door back up? This one's called the L word. Loser. <laughs> Lasagna. My mind went to lube. <laughs> There's that too. Hi from Australia. So. You have to read this whole email in an Australian accent. I Go. cannot. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> Steve Irwin. My boyfriend and I have been together for eight months and had a, had a couple of conversations about saying I love you to each other. And without me saying it, I said that I did. That's you saying it. And I asked his opinion on it. And both times I asked, he said he wasn't ready yet. So he's not love. You said, well, do you? Yes, but I'm not going to say it. No, you fucking said it. It's out there. He knows. And without me saying it, I said that I did. Yeah. How does that? She didn't say I love you, but she, you know, I am. I do. That's what that is. Huh. How would you feel if I asked, if I said that I love you like that? Yeah. That's the only way I can foresee that conversation. How do you say I love you without saying it? Well, maybe they were having a conversation about love or being in love or how they feel. And maybe he was like, well, do you love me? And she's like, well, I'm not going to say that, but yeah. Because she didn't actually say, I love mm, you. Okay. That's the way I took that. But it could have been that way too. I mean, it could have been any scenario of that. Yeah. But that's where I got, that's where my brain went. Okay. Back into the email. I understand that everyone has their own timeline and whatnot, but I'm itching for him to say it. Why? Well, this ain't about you. But I'm itching for him to say it. So forget everything that I just said about everyone having their own timeline and things and evolving emotions. I need him to say it, so I want him to say it. That is so selfish. Yeah. I wonder why, though. Like, is this just you want to be in love? Like, why do you need him to say that to you? Do you need the reassurance? Right. Is he behaving in a way that is making you question on whether or not he wants to be with you? There's a bit of an age difference. He's 27 and I'm 20. I'm not diving in too quickly here, am I? Or should we be saying it? I don't got an answer on that. Everybody says it when they're ready to say it. Yeah, I I think that that matters in terms of like a you thing. Like if if you're in love and you want your partner to know that you're in love, you tell them. Yeah. And if they don't tell you it back, they're not in love with you. It's okay. Your love for them should not be dependent on them loving you back. Yeah. I love you. Well, I don't love you. Well, I was just kidding. I'll love you. I'd say that. Yeah. Come on. Is that going to change the way that you feel about him? Mm -hmm. You said I love you to me, and it took me about a week before I said it to you. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want it to just be a reaction. Right. I didn't want it to be a response. Right, but we're also very big on not having habitual I love yous. Although we have become habitual with the phone calls. I can be in the driveway and be like, okay, I love you, and I hang the phone up. I love you, I love you too, and I hang the phone up. I have become habitual with that. I don't want to not hang the phone up without telling you. Yeah. But those, those I love yous are... Th- those were the I love yous that we didn't want to be habitual for a very long time. And like, we've kind of fallen into that, but we are the random I love yous. Why? Why did you say that? Tell me why you love me. What made you feel that in the moment? We still do that. Yeah. Because those I love yous mean a whole lot more than I'm hanging up the phone and walking 15 feet into the house, right? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. But but if you were to if you were to not tell me I love you as we were hanging the phone up anymore, or if I was to be like, I love you, and you were like, that's habitual, I'm not saying it back, I'll talk to you later, and then hung the phone up, I wouldn't be mad about it. I'd be like, damn, really? Okay, call me on my shit, I got it. 
And like I would make a little jokey joke about it, but I wouldn't feel hurt or disrespected or anything because we've had those conversations. Um, I'm glad you didn't just say it back to me when I said I love you. I'm glad that you took that time to process what that meant because there was a lot behind that. It wasn't just a what up, girl? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there was a there was a lot behind that. And it wasn't just a things are fun and lustful. Like there was you were fucking down for me. Like there was a lot of shit going on in my life. I don't, um, I don't know. I feel like in this situation where even if he was to be like, I love you just to placate that, like, do you really want that? Wouldn't, right. Wouldn't do you that want cheapen an obligatory, it? Right. I love you. Wouldn't that cheapen that for you for the rest of your life? Knowing that he said it just because you expected him to, would you respect him for doing that? It's crazy how people get what they want but then realizes not how they wanted it. Right. Was that the end of that one? No. Oh, okay. Because I feel like we know each other enough at this point and should be able to say it, and he puts it off a fair bit. He's not in love. He acts like he does, in my opinion, but he's a very conservative guy until you get to know him. What does that got to do with anything? What does that got to do with anything? Yeah. You know him, right? He knows you. You guys have been together for eight months. I'm assuming you're fucking. Mm -hmm. So he knows you intimately. He's not in love if he's not saying it. Right. I love him so much already and just want to say it and know I'll have it returned. He said I can say it. It doesn't phase him, but he won't yet. Because he doesn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. I've met his whole family, been to his family's formal events like weddings and met his nieces and nephews. We have a 12-week-old puppy together. He's great with my family and treats me so amazingly well. I'm in love with this man, and it just kind of hurts to know he doesn't feel like he can say it back yet. P.S. I told my mother, and she thinks she can see it in how he looks at me, but I've never seen it other than the obviously. Me getting dressed, me getting changed in front of him. That's, that's lust, bitch. That's a different L word. Yeah, that's lust. That's, um, if that's the only time he gives you attention and that's when you feel loved in that moment, that's lust. And your mom's reassuring you in a way that she shouldn't be doing that right now. She's planting hope in you when neither of you know for a fact that that's how he feels. Well, I'm yeah, either of them, the mom and the daughter. Yeah. Right. For the mom, I told my mother and she thinks she can see it in how he looks at me. That, that wouldn't be reassuring to me. You, you are now going to people outside of your relationship to validate that he loves you. Right. I realized just now that I, I called that chick a bitch and like I've been doing that like in joking manners. Mm -hmm. Like we do that. Right. And and now it's becoming, it's stepped past that and becoming part of my vocabulary. I need to dial that back. I don't like that. Okay. So if I do that again and I don't catch myself doing it, call me on it so that okay. I can start correcting that behavior. Why? So there's a whole lot of other problems now knowing that you go to your mother about your relationship. Right. It really bothers me that I've never seen it other than the obviously me getting changed in front of him. And she put a little laughing emoji behind that. I don't find that funny. Yeah, it's not cute. If at all. you only look at me lovingly when I am nude in front of you, that tells me that you were just into me for my body. I'm good on that. I am so much more than my physical being. There's a lot of insecurity in this and there is a lot of grabbing for love and he's he's told you that he's not there yet. I'm not going to sit here and go, well, maybe he loves you. The man's not in love with you. If he was in love with you, he would tell you that. He would hit you with the I love you's and this is why I love you. Y'all could still just be in the courting phase and he's still getting to know you. I don't think that. Well, I mean, they might be in, in terms of phases, but it sounds like they're living together. Yeah. At eight months. They got a 12 week puppy together. You don't get a dog together if you're, you know what I mean? Like he got a dog or you got a dog, unless you're living together, then we got a dog mm -hmm. because you've now established that living situation. Yeah. So, so they're eight months in living together and not in love. Yeah. That sounds like. Why? Convenience. Yeah. Yeah. I got in-house pussy now. Like right. I don't have to chase pussy, it. It's here. Split bills. Right. Not she love. cooks for me. That's a bonus. Bookmark. Yeah. I really think that we're doomed. 
as a species. Yeah, as humanity. Yep. Yeah, I I think. Yeah, I agree. There is so much regression happening. Of course, there are intelligent people out there in the younger generations, and they are doing everything they can to help humanity. But there are so many not that way, that way out that there's a vast majority of people. Yeah. Everything has become transactional. Yeah. Like we can be together. You can move in and help me pay bills and we can fuck and do the thing. But like, but I'm not going to be committed to you and I'm right. not going to say I love you. Right. We're not really there though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and like, I know that this probably is not going to last. So I don't want to really invest in you. And when things are good because you moved in with me, it'll be great. But when things get bad because you moved in with me, you're going to be the one to go. And I'm just going to, benefit and keep all of my shit and like Mm -hmm. my dog because this is my house like you can go live in your car you're not taking the fucking dog with you you. go live at your mom's house right the issue with this email is not that he hasn't said i love you back it's that you've skipped a whole bunch of fucking steps right and you shouldn't have done that yeah i would never move in with somebody if there wasn't a foundation of i love you and we're gonna do something with this i wouldn't move in with somebody unless there's like been real discussions of the future. Mm-hmm. Where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you mm-hmm. see yourself in five years? Where do I fit into all of this? Because if I'm just riding along, I, I, I don't have time for that. Right. I want long-term commitment, stability, and a functioning, successful relationship. I don't want to be a roommate. I don't want to be a booty call that, that lives with you. Like I don't want the hot and cold how is this going to play out in the next five years? Where are we going? Yep. I agree. It's some little kid shit. It really is. And uh, I don't understand going to other people to validate emotions that somebody has already told you they don't feel yet. Like that, that really bothers me going to your mom, going to your sister, going to your best friends and getting validation from them that they can see the love in him even though he's already said I'm not there yet, that why are you trying to exert so much control? How do you see the love in somebody? People see the love in us all the time, the way we look at each other. And, but there is intent behind that. It's well known that we have love for one another. Mm -hmm. But, But for somebody that's not claiming to be in love. And so how does that look? How can you look at two people and be like, oh, they're madly in love? Mm-hmm. Are they holding the hands all the time? Are they physical constantly? Are they, you know, hyping each other up? Like, because, because I mean that I can see that I can see people who are fucking 70 years old who have been together for 50 years. You can tell they still love each other. Yeah. And you can tell the people who are 70 years old that have been together for 50 years. They hate each other's guts. And they're just together for convenience at right. that point. You can tell it by their body language and the way that they carry themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. So if she's like, I can see that he loves you. Can you? Or are you seeing that he's just a good man and he's trying to do right by her and like trying to build something and trying to like establish a foundation because eight months isn't really that long for a relationship like. <sighs> or is that like the motherly need to see with a child who's right. clearly going through emotional distress? Yep. That, I mean, that's a very good point. My brain started formulating that as you were talking. The, um, the idea that. No, oh, I lost my train of thought. That was a good good point, though. I used to do that. What? I would have a conversation with somebody, and then I would go talk to a bunch of other people and be like, okay, well, do you think they truly feel this way, or am I right in thinking that they feel the opposite and they're just trying to hurt my feelings? And then people would validate my anxieties to make me feel better, and I'm wrong. The person told me how they felt. I should believe them and not try to impose my emotions and my feelings in on it because I need it to be a certain way. Ruined every relationship I had by doing that. Yeah, there's a very big selfishness in that. It contributed to the the fallout of relationships. I should say that. It wasn't the only reason. Yeah. Big selfishness in that. It, there is. There is a, I need to satiate the emotions in me. There is a hurricane of emotion going on in me. And because of that, I need to be taken care of and soothed. You're not saying the right thing right now. You're not saying the right thing. So I need to go to other people to validate what I'm going through. You're wrong. You're just not willing to admit to me what's going on for X amount of reasons. It's crazy what people will do to turn away from reality. Yeah. We're two hours. 
Well, okay. we're hour and 53 minutes. Once this is edited down, probably be like an hour and 45. You want to wrap it up? Yeah. Take a break and then do the gentleman. Okay. All right, guys. With that being said, remember, you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.